Okay, uh, we have we are already four minutes uh, into the hour, so I would say let's start. Um, welcome everyone to the uh, Cupid Community Meeting happening this time on twelfth uh, of January, twenty twenty two. Please, everyone, uh, share your attendance in the document link that I posted into the chat. Um, and first point would be uh, whether we have any new people. I arrive late. Are... Can you put on the chat again the document? Of course, of course. One second. I'm going to share it again. So here it is. So yeah, if anyone wants to introduce himself to the community, um, now is your chance. Hi, here's is Andre from the desk. Uh, I think I'm gonna deploy the largest implementations of Covert worldwide with 1 million concurrent users, 125,000 bare metal servers. Oh, wow. That sounds, that sounds awesome. 100 clusters of Kubernetes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, I think we still need some, some people that are uh, uh, posting their user stories. Um, if you want to join into the process, uh, please um, uh, probably uh, you, you, could, you could just uh, uh, put into the uh, Cupid community document a reminder so that we can back, get back to you probably. Because I think we would be really interested in hearing your stories on uh, how it goes. Uh, I have I done already an interview with CNCF uh, team uh, already. Okay, your notes. okay. Okay, yeah, I was just thinking about that. Maybe if you haven't, then, then I would uh, have to remind you again. But if you have done that already, then you should be good. Thanks. Great. Okay, so. Can I um, ask something? Um, would you would you mind um, if, uh, that we go through the agenda first? And uh, there is yes, one, I know, but uh, maybe maybe we can uh, you could you could uh, hold that back to the open floor probably. So, yeah, no problem at all. Okay, great. So, okay, um, if anyone has any agenda or notes that he wants to fill in, um, that would also be great probably. Um, just to just to add this to the document. Okay, then. Looks like you're up next. <laughs> Andre, if you want, I guess yes. if we don't have any agenda items, then you can just go on. Uh, <clears throat> I put on the chat window uh, the information about uh, the uh, virtual machine pools. And I would like to ask, in, in, because I was talking last year, that it is going to be released, uh, going to be part of the next release. If the version forty nine already includes that, it does. Um, there's a bug in it uh, that I'm working on right now. We talked about this in the uh, performance yeah. meeting last week. Um, I think that it's uh, yeah, so it's available. Um, go ahead and feel comfortable with getting some preliminary experience with it. Um, it's going to be fleshed out more with more features and things like that um, that we have documented in our uh, design proposal for it. But also be aware that uh, it's not perfect yet. We've already identified a bug. I need to create a GitHub issue for it. I'm already working to resolve it, but I would not put it in production yet. Yes, I I for I, I take notes, but I for uh, I lost. Who is responsible for this specific feature? I take notes on the, 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 the scalability meeting. Who is responsible for that feature specifically? 
uh, I wrote the feature. So this is David Vossel talking. Oh, David. Yes, um, I wouldn't say anyone's responsible necessarily. It's kind of, uh, you know, a community project. Anyone can contribute yeah. these, uh, these additional features, bug fixes, things like that moving forward. I'm probably the, um, I guess, primary contributor to that feature at the moment. Yes, David Vox. So let me grab uh, Can you type your 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 contacts here or something? It's in the PR. Um, so if you look at the virtual machine pools PR, it's in the chat. Um, my name is the David Vox Vossil. Ah, Vox. Yeah, it's literally my my entire name is my okay. GitHub. Okay, great. <laughs> I found you on on, on the <clears throat> the channels on the community. Thank you so much. Uh, we plan to contribute not only with uh, ideas, but actually work. And that's why I, I would like to, to talk to you later, okay? Yeah, sounds great. Um, yeah, be aware of our, our, you might already be aware that we have Slack channel uh, as well for kind of at the Slack, I forget the name, the, the channel. Uh, I'm on the Slack also, I'm gonna find out uh, okay. you there okay um <clears throat> we are doing a, a hard uh job uh to to make the solution scale on top of kubevert and on my mind this can be came one of the largest implementations in the world uh, of kubevert if not the, the largest because this is for moving our current user base only, and we plan to grow on top of that. Okay. Um, there are a lot of features that are missing for our needs, but uh, the major components are there, and just a matter of change a little bit uh, to our needs. That's at least my my sentiment at now okay so definitely uh, hi roman here so definitely if you're missing something and is, think it's useful for you and a broader community a broader community just file issues and we can have a look at them so that we yes <clears throat> let me explain yeah. what is missing that is not on the papers yeah you, you don't have to go through it here if yeah okay it's it's better i, I mean we can if you want but I guess in general, it's probably good if you just bring it to paper on the yeah. issues and then we can see. Because there are more, just, there are much more people on the project than are here in the calls. They can yes. you know, also have a look and so on. I mean, yeah. in addition, if nothing is moving on them, of course, just, yeah. just ask. Uh, during the, the, the scalability project, uh, the, the missing feature is to have a single pool with multiple flavors, like two virtual CPU, four virtual CPU. And you mentioned you team the team mentioned a term for that. I don't take notes of that. Can you repeat? For, so maybe create a pool for... with several, let's say, flavors: two virtual CPU, four virtual CPUs, eight, uh, eight virtual CPU, sixteen virtual CPUs in the same pool. No, you that, that's not, yeah. So we, I think we touched briefly on this in the performance meeting as well. A pool is for identical replicas. So- Only uh, for identical. Right, so one flavor, for example, would be uh, assigned to a pool simply because the pool only has one virtual machine instance specification in it. So there's only one way to describe, for example, what a VM and a VMI will look like inside of a pool. Uh, if you want uh, multiple, uh, CPU, if you want to express the ability to have uh, multiple replicas of uh, different size CPUs and things like that, that would be multiple pools. So it would be a pool per a VM instance spec. Similar, think of this as a deployment, like a pod deployment. Uh, 
it, it's similar in concept that we're only replicating identical uh, virtual machines, just like a deployment only replicates identical pods. Great. And the, or, I didn't find uh, uh, any information if it's valid. <clears throat> I'm able to create a VM with GPU, but I can, uh, I'm able to create a pool of VMs also with GPU or not. I don't see why you wouldn't be able to. Uh, okay. That's all dependent on how many on GPUs. Hardware. Yeah, yeah. So GPUs, if you're assigning them using resources, mm -hmm. uh, so like a resource request, um, then it's just all dependent on the Kubernetes scheduler to assign that virtual machine to virtual machines pod to a node that has access to a GPU. That should, okay. should work. Um, I would like to ask you, uh, how can I, I bring to the table live migration? Uh, because this is something that we are testing right now. And when I attach the GPU on it, the live migration doesn't work. We need to work on that also to fix it and make it possible. <laughs> uh, Vladek, you have any thoughts? Yeah, uh, well, in, in general, it just doesn't doesn't work. Um, yes. Yeah, physical devices they have uh, their their memory in the device, and then we cannot really migrate this, at least right now. At now, <laughs> we need to develop that missing part for you know. <laughs> okay. This is something that we're gonna work on for you know. Okay. Perhaps with your help. <laughs> I don't think that this is a well. Yeah, it's this is probably not even related to Qbert. This is right, Vladik. Like, this goes to do the stack below our skewemo libvert and so on. So yeah, this is exactly. much bigger than just Qbert. It's like the underlying stack right now cannot do that, not just Qbert. Mm -hmm. And so, we, yeah, not sure what to expect there from us in this case. Um, I think one thing what, what what's for instance done on SROVs is like they're first detached, so live unplugged, then you migrate and then you plug it in again. But of course you have downtime during that time for it. But for SR for I mean in theory that would be probably possible for GPUs too in some K way. Yeah. Yeah. If we can uh, allow the users to know that they, they are being migrated, I think this is gonna work. Okay. Then um, that's most of my, my questions for today. Uh, the floor is yours. Okay. Um, I think, uh, Stu, um, you added something about the Cupid Summit. If, if, do you want to go on on that? Sure. I was uh, trying to be anonymous because I might have to drop soon. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just a reminder, the Cupid Summit is coming up. It's uh, just over a month away. And so that'll be the 16th and 17th of February. Be there, be square. All the cool kids are coming. Uh, if you have an idea for a topic or anything you want to propose, uh, there are a link is provided in order to figure out how to submit that. Um, please do. Okay. Um, so next one would be um, Edward. Uh, with a question about the compatibility of commands. Do you want to go on on that? Yeah, I I think I asked something uh, last week or a week before, I don't remember, but something else came to mind and it was interesting how it is solved. If if we, if in COVID we introduce a new, a new VMI specification or we change the spec in one way or the other and and how, how is it working when you send the, because usually the VMI spec is sent, I mean, the structure itself is sent between the handler and the launcher. How is, how is the compatibility works in this case? So um, normally it works like this, like when we're up, when you're updating keyword until the last, so we have to, I think that you understand it from the beginning, we have to think about the update process as a whole. So when we introduce no API fields, they are just available 
just at the end of the upgrade process. So while you can already potentially run new word handlers and word controllers, you're at this stage still not able to create VMI objects with the new API fields. So at this stage, it would be like, you can only post old VMI fields. They get validated, they get, they, they get saved, they get, go through word controller and word handler because there is no API breakage. They can understand it, although they would understand more fields. And then it goes to word launcher and their, um, and their word launcher can have, um, there you have, so, so this is get general on how we set, ensure compatibility. And then on the serialization to word launcher, you can have after the update is succeeded two possibilities. One is that the word launcher already understands the new field or it does not understand the new field. If it's not there, this basically means that this launcher can't use it, but this is normally not relevant because the API spec is not mutable, the word VMI spec. So old word launchers should then also they're running against the new word handler never see this new field, except if it's uh, changeable, which we normally don't do. Sorry, it, it got a little bit more confusing than I thought it would be. I can, I'm happy to rephrase it if it's not clear. Oh, I think it's it's fine. So one one thing that you have said is that the the VMI the new VMI spec, if it was introduced, it will appear only after. This is what I, I'm not really clear. It will happen only after all. For example, all the virt handle have been upgraded. This is what you mean. Yes, only after all word handlers and all word controllers are updated, we will start rolling out new word APIs, okay. which have modified webhooks, which would allow the new fields. So okay. only at this stage, you can ever see a VMI with a new field. And since the VMI spec is normally not mutable, all launchers which are still running would also never see this field. But even if they would, because like for, in for instance, for hot plug or something, if this is the new device which you can suddenly hot plug, they would never see it because they never they don't even know what this is, and it would be a no op in this case, which could mean that in some cases you would have to take some considerations there, but very often not even that. Okay, I I guess it's it's clear. Yeah, but happy to answer this again in more detail if needed. I think it's crucial to to things right, but. So yeah. I think I was why like, many many looking at the case where you have already the bit handle and it already has a VMI spec which is has more fields let's say and then it sends it to the other side so the other side will uh, will deserialize it and and then but it will be okay because the new the extra fields are not uh, are ignored that's it yeah exactly but as I said, normally that's not, not even that is possible because the spec is not mutable after you created the VMI. No, no but the, the VMI is still sent there all the time. So yeah, but I understand, thanks. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, then if there's no, uh, nothing more for the open floor, we should uh, probably uh, have a look at the pull request that needs attention. Anyone, anything special on your mind or should we just probably go over the list and have a look at that? Or everyone has got a feeling that probably we are okay with that or, by the way, do you even see my screen uh, okay? Yes. Okay, great. So, okay, this is one by uh, Bartosz. I think this is just a, oh, this is just a job, okay. Work in progress, uh, docs remove. This is already approved. Do, Sorry? Do we now also go through PRs or just issues? All right, I think oh. that that's, that section was only if someone wanted to ask for uh, for attention on a PR, but if there is, if it's empty, then yeah. I think we can. I was just, I was yeah. just having the idea of just uh, having a look at the, uh, at the PRs probably if there was something be wrong, but yeah, we can we can just go on anyway. Um, okay, so uh, next one will be the mailing list. Oops, this one. 
I'm not sure. I think the only melts that we had in recent uh, days were the uh, announcement of the new release and uh, my um, uh, my pending jobs email, right? And I think um, the rest has already gotten handled somehow. This is meeting notes. On able to upload image using WordCastle, okay, but I think there is already some. Okay. Okay, so this is asking for more information, I guess. So uh, this also looks like there are people going on here and having some additions here. Okay, so I think this looks quite okay. Um, Okay, the next one would be a second. I've lost my lost my account somehow. Um, okay, next one would be the box cup. Um, okay, I see one PR already here. Um, I'm not sure if anyone entered that. That whether that ha should have gotten probably um, handled. Um, at the upper section with the pull request, I'm just going to have a look at that probably. Yeah, hey Daniel, I, I added this. Oh, hey. Yeah, this is um, this was something that um, I just wanted to mention. That's something that we saw internally that I thought was interesting. Um, it, we're still kind of working on kind of deciphering what's going on, but at like a high level, um, what we've noticed is that, because um, we do a lot of deleting, um, for the leading of VMs and, or sorry, VMIs. And, um, and we've noticed some, some strange behavior um, just when in day-to-day -day operations, you know, like we have to sometimes reboot nodes and um, we don't see the pods will like for handlers and stuff will restart. <clears throat> and we've noticed that sometimes, um, you know, in nodes, like when we do a lot of deletes and we have, you know, sometimes we restart nodes that we run into situations where, um, this this ghost record um, stays around. And it's caused a few issues where um, we've seen the VMIs um, hang around um, and like in a state that like like here like in scheduled and it's like unclear what's going on and they don't they don't we can't really get rid of them and then um, like when we can force delete them and whatnot but they you know just the normal delete path and doesn't really work and um, and there's a few things that kind of show up in the logs for this um, that you can see there. But kind of the, I guess the way I'd summarize is like if if you do a lot of deletes and you restart a node, um, some things might don't seem to get maybe don't get cleaned up or something doesn't quite happen um, right where like the ghost record hangs around and um, and it doesn't happen all the time. It happens very infrequently. But it's something that uh, can cause VMs to enter this state. Um, I don't, I was kind of, the reason I wanted to raise attention is in case people have some more experience with uh, the way these, these ghost records are recorded and, and cleaned up, if people have any thoughts on that. Yeah, <laughs> okay, uh, that's interesting. Uh, so the purpose of the ghost record is to keep a uh, bookkeeping um, on the persistent nodes disk, like on the actual local storage, that a virtual machine existed at one point, and maybe we created some uh, local ephemeral data associated with it that needs to get cleaned up. So even if Vert Handler, for example, uh, restarts, and when it comes back online, a VMI is no longer present in the etcd, so we don't see it anymore. We have a ghost record saying, hey, this thing used to exist, um, so clean up these mounts and whatever else. Um, yeah, the fact that uh, you're seeing this, um, it's curious to me if my expectation for how this would work in this exact scenario where we have a ghost record for a VMI, which uh, has a different UID as the VM with the same name um, that's uh, actually in the cluster right now, is I would expect the previous previous VMI's local data to get cleaned up, that ghost record to get removed, and then processing the new VMI. Are you saying that uh, the new VMI 
never moves past this stage and is essentially stuck? Like, does it ever eventually get started? You get stuck. Yeah, I would, it, it stays here forever. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, that's a bug. Um, I can post some comments on it. I don't know what I'd okay. be able to look at, but I can at least comment on what my expectation would be there. Yeah, uh, that would help a lot. Yeah, but just to make it clear, because yeah, I think that's that's basically the context I'm missing. Because um, um, I just want to make sure that you know, because we're we're looking at trying to fix this, but I just want to make sure we're not going the wrong path here. Okay. Perfect. I will comment on it. You can, you guys can right. move on. Thanks, David. Okay. Thanks, David. Um, okay, so um, then I would say we could uh, just uh, we're we're at uh, half of the hour, so we could just uh, do a normal box drop. Anyone is okay with that? Okay. No objections. Yep, sounds great. Then I think. Like this for yes, <laughs> lazy consensus as I know, right? Okay. <laughs> um, okay, this first one is about CNI plugin. Um, okay, so I don't know much about networks. Probably someone wants to chime in. I can also, of course, uh, increase the font size if you don't you can read it. But this looks like a network issue, and yeah, this, so this looks like a, being confused about what this MAC address does when you specify it, and you basically get this MAC address inside the VM but not on the pod. I can I can answer uh, to this one. Oh, okay. Okay. Miguel, What's the number? Yes. 7055. Okay, thanks. I could, I could, yeah, okay. I could also have tech to adjust, but yeah, fine. Ah. Okay. Yeah, great if you take it, yeah. Okay, next one is something with SRIV from Eddie, I guess. This is something that, um, okay, let's see. Did you, did you just open this as a tracker or something? Or um, do you ac actually see some, uh, see some, um, need some more information from someone else here? No, no, it's, uh, <clears throat> we identify a problem when, the, when you have a survey and no guest agent. So we, we will take care of it probably. Edward, is this, yeah. I, I saw something similar. Is maybe this is also related that um, if a guest agent is detected, but the communication is not working, that I think I've seen that the pod IPs are also not reported correctly. Like you get no IPs reported. Is this the same thing? Mm, you mean for SRV? No, in general, from the guest agent reporting, I, I'm there. So uh, the, the, we are, we, it, there is a work done now, at least I started it to, to redo or refactor the, the reporting in general, but uh, maybe that's, uh, there is a problem there. It's a bit too complicated at the moment, but we hope we will uh, simplify okay. it. And, uh, but I don't, know, I don't think it's related to this one. This one is, is specific with uh, currently the way the the status is reported of what's going on in ah, okay. the guest uh, with SRV specifically, we only we don't take it from the we don't read the domain information. We just go to the guest agent and that's it. And uh, that's pro obviously wrong. Uh, so when you don't have a guest agent, you will just not see the interface at all in the status. Ah, so so it's it's a little bit related to what I have. Well, what I've experienced yeah. is when the guest agent is running and you can connect to it, but the guest agent can't read the networking information. You just get no IP, not even the node, the, the pod IP. So it's a little mm -hmm. bit related at least. Yeah. yeah, so if you, yeah. 
but uh, currently the the logic is more or less is okay it's supposed to be something like uh, we read what's on the domain and uh, we overwrite it with what we see on the guest something on the guest agent so more or less like this but yeah. it's oversimplified and it's much more complicated and we hope to make it much clearer yeah, yeah this this would then probably also tangate tangate my issue because the pod ip always needs has to be there no matter what the agent reports yeah yeah for only for masquerade actually this is correct uh, only if it's if you if we have this is actually a topic that we are we i think it was raised here also it's it's a bit odd that uh in most of the cases we we reported the status what 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 we hope is in the in the guest itself but for uh, masquerade it's more uh it's more I would call it more uh, extreme because there, even if the guest didn't got any IP at all, we still report as if the the interface is there. But I yeah, guess we don't have a lot of choices here. Yeah, but I think that is that is a good option, and yeah. I think also for the whenever we connect to the pod interface, we should always report the pod IP, no matter if masquerade or bridge is used. But what I see is when the guest agent is there, it's happily overriding that, and if the guest agent can't report anything, we report nothing at all. <laughs> and this is not what we want from a service discovery perspective, I think. I, I think that the, this, this, if you think it's a problem because what you just said is for, for, uh, the, for the pod network with masquerade binding, this is how it should, is supposed to work. You only read what's on the pod and yeah. you report only that. But for bridge, for the bridge binding that's not how it works the bridge binding we we are reporting either what's in the guest by the guest agent or what we read uh, that is there so we are we are trying not to we are trying to be as much as transparent as possible but if this is not something that you, if someone wants to overwrite it to to say what was in the, on the pod, no matter what we see in the guest, we should report yeah. that one, then it needs to be changed yeah. for the yeah, pod. Yeah, the network. interesting thing for me was that the Q, Q guest agent was running, it could just not read networking information due to a bug in the cloud image. So it was reporting no network, and then we saw no network, although it was happily there. So And I guess if you have, for instance, HTTP readiness probes and they're passing, everything would be fine still, right? Yeah, it's, it's a tricky topic. Okay, so then I think uh, there is no progress going on on that. Yeah, let's see. Next one will be just a question. Um, okay. Um, I'm not exactly clear on what he's trying to ask here. I only support one VNC connection per VM. I prefer the second connection if you're small working my to exist connector. Um, I'm not familiar with uh, VNC connections. Um, are we able to do this multiple times? It just lost the screen, sir. No, uh, I mean, in theory, it could be supported, but we don't support it. Okay, okay, so um, I can I can just answer in, the, in that we do not support more personal. Yeah. But it's an enhancement request, so it seems like the person is aware of that. It's like more a matter of if we want. Um, yeah, I can, Maybe. I can just um, uh, please... Uh, uh, specify a little bit more on the use case probably. Mm -hmm. um, more Makes a lot of sense case. because VNC is only an admin access point and uh, I mean, you could imagine yeah, that, that could... sometimes it, it would be nice for two admins on different locations where for whatever reason they can't share the screen. They may still be able to connect to the same, v same VM and see the screen or something, but I'm not sure if it's really needed, depends. So, so I'm also curious what, what the person would say. Hmm. Um, okay.
Okay, triage. Um, I guess it needs more information. I'm not exactly. Yeah, may Let's maybe. See. Did um, you already? Yeah, maybe. Don't say that we just need information to see how we implement it. It's really more like finding out the use case right? if we want it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I I was thinking that we want him to to ask about the use case, so um, we have more information, um, not about how to implement. I think that should be clear, but uh, at least. Um, that, that we have a special uh, uh, decisive use case. Uh, yeah, yeah. so that we can to... understand the need. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a pattern. Um, so that we can understand that the need is a good, good one. That's fine with you? Works for me. Okay, great. Okay, okay next one will be this one, query system result requirements for a cuber cluster for optimal performance. Run for CPN money requirements for cuber cluster to run. Do we have such documentation already? What we have as a minimum resource requirement somehow? We sure. just we just have minimum requirements on the pod set which okay. run to a certain degree, I would say, but we have no documentation, which would, for instance, outline the grow, like what happened, how much, how many resources do you need if, if you run on a node, on a cluster with 500 nodes and 10,000 VMs. I mean, that's not even mm -hmm. possible, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, sure. We have so... no documentation, which indicates the growth. Okay. Don't have... Uh, but they can check on the created pods the the requests of CPU and memory, and it's I think mostly just CPU which we are requesting. You can check on the pods how much resources are consumed, or, or what what are you saying? Uh, what, what requests we are setting, oh. which memory and CPU requests we are setting. Okay. Okay. Hmm. If that does not help, please get back to us and ask. Uh, and and uh, and uh, it it probably makes sense to note that when the cluster scales, you may need more than that for good performance. And that will also take it for as long as it's available. But we have no no documentation or tests which indicate what would be needed on bigger scale. You would probably need more resources, right? Yeah. And and since we only said it's requests and no limited result, will also be taken hmm. if it's available. <laughs> mm. Okay. Okay, so um, next one. This is the ghost record that was already handled. Then we have a live migration method. This only seen block migration even with the PVC. Okay, I don't have any idea. Okay. So I think we introduced something about host model not being live migratable. Can that be? Yeah. No, host model should work. Host path through. No. I think there is another disk in there. Um, can you just, is there an example? Yeah. Yeah, there is a cloud limit, I think. So th this has to be. Um, block migration. Okay. Oh, yeah. Cloud and no cloud. Okay. Okay. Um, Vladik, would you, would you be able to, to have a look at that probably and, and tell? 
what yes. exactly the problem is. Can I assign it to you probably? Would yeah. that be okay for you? Okay. Thank you for that. Okay, so this one, verify C compute related E2 e tests and on. Ah, that's just a tracker from, from uh, Howard, I guess, right? Okay, I think that's a tracker. Okay, next one will be the incorrect operation of the device plugin. So, what uh, edit server host devices? I don't, I'm not sure if we allow mapping different devices to the same and that they get counted. Radic, do you remember the detail? Yeah, so in, in general, this should work. <laughs> at least this <laughs> is working in the past. Um, I think Alicia was uh, just looking into this and she found uh, uh, she found why isn't it not possible. Um, but I think um, there, there can be an easy fix for this. Although here the device is the same, uh, so I'm not sure why the PCI vendor selector is the same number. Ah, no, sorry, uh, I'm mistaken. I, I think we can fix this. Um, okay, so it should also work to map it to the sum. Uh, <clears throat> it's a bug in the code. Okay. Yeah. And oh, oh yeah. yeah, okay. I see. Alice, Alice already did. Okay, then let's the... just add a trash accepted. Awesome. Yeah. True. Okay. Okay, then this one is stage two VM with a math grab mode. I think this this. There was some discussion like we had this already. last time somehow. I'm not sure. 16 days ago. Yeah, it was probably discussed last week. Yeah. So yeah, I think then then we should be at least uh, with with the current list of issues, we should be through. Okay, that's a, that's a good idea. that's a good thing. So okay, then um, I would say. Um, if anyone else probably has something to announce or to say here. So if, if you don't, then I can give you a couple of minutes back from the hour. That is great. Um, and yeah, then thanks for your attendance and um, everyone have a nice rest of the day and see you next week. See you. Bye. Bye. Um. Okay. See you. Bye. Bye-bye.